a lemon in its purest form before being sold in a supermarket. Citrus is grown by the ton here in South Africa. In order to support production and export, the state has financed the search for bioinsecticide based on moths. One company, Exit, which is 50% government owned by the South African state, was created to market this product. The procedure of Exit is to drop moths from the air using gyrocopters a cross between a fixed-wing aircraft and a helicopter. The insect reservoir is installed in the passenger seat of the aircraft. The company operates from Citrusdale, Pattonsey and Kirkwood, respectively close to Cape Town and Port Elizabeth. The technology is a success and the population of parasites has decreased significantly in a few years. On April 15, 2014, during his training subsidized by Exit to join the ranks of the company, a young pilot, Marco Fail, crashes a gyrocopter. The accident is fatal. He was 21 years old. The company pays for their training in exchange of having them work for Exit. On April 20, 2015, another young pilot, Zane Miles, crashes on his first day of work. He was 22 years old. Then everything accelerates. In September 2015, yet another gyrocopter accident occurred with pilot Kevin Weller on board, who managed to escape a very untimely fate. This was not the case for Marco Martino, a French pilot who went down three days later. Like Zane, Marco also lost his life on his first day of work. He was 23 years old. After this series of accidents, Exit finally reacts. The company immediately stops the use of gyrocopters in its operations, and replaces them with a fixed-wing aircraft. The activity resumes, and the new pilot, Cobus Klopper, crashes in October 2016. He was 27 years old. These four fatal accidents have occurred in just two and a half years. It was therefore necessary to start a blank sheet to gather the facts and link them together in order to find answers. The first element is obvious, the age of the pilots. The three young people who lost their lives in gyrocopters were under the age of 25 when they first started. They left South African aviation schools with a commercial pilot license and the aim of becoming airline pilots. They were short of about 200 flying hours to get hired by an airline. It was impossible for them to find work because of their limited experience. Without the possibility of finding a job elsewhere, they seized the opportunity offered by Exit to build their hours by crop spraying. Unlike their training on aeroplanes, the piloting of a gyrocopter is radically different. Until 2014, no accidents had been reported. Then a second element appears. The company uses the services of an operator who provides the crop spraying equipment and pilots. But after eight years of service and 6,000 flying hours, the situation changes. Exit breaks the contract with Wagtail Aviation in 2013 and turns to a cheaper competitor, Aerotrack. This South African low-cost company then sets out to find a gyrocopter training school that agrees to a 20-hour formation. The flying time is sufficient to obtain a recreational license. Training takes place at a high altitude and high speed, although actual crop spraying work is carried out under very different conditions. Unlike recreational training, Crop spraying missions entail flying at low altitudes directly above the citrus trees. It is also necessary to perform a series of 180 degrees turns to maneuver around. These types of maneuvers require at least 100 hours of experience, according to the Civil Aviation Authority. 100 hours is much more than the minimum of 20 hours required by Aerotrax training. For this work, in a hostile environment of hills and mountains, young pilots had to perform complex maneuvers. They did not have enough experience. This information then sheds light on the two accidents that took place during the first days of work of Zane and Marco. There is also negligence of the safety equipment and procedures with, for example, the absence of fireproof flying gear for the pilots. One of them incurred third-degree burns covering 95% of his body. Attention is also drawn to the lack of certification of the pilots to carry out agricultural work. Lack of hours, inadequate training, and neglected equipment. In these circumstances, how did the company obtain the authorization of Civil Aviation Authority for these pilots to fly? Despite the accumulation of the facts, 
Any proceedings against the company Exit and its operator Aerotrack is blocked by the deadline of for publication of accident reports. Without these reports, justice can be served even if there is documented evidence provided by the families of the victims. The local police tried to get the reports, but the emails remain unanswered. The facts are plain to see and the evidence is at hand, but time goes by and the pain remains. The company exit is still operating, and if nothing is done to stop these practices, the list of victims can still be added to. What is there to be done about deaf and mute administration? How many accidents can take place in a company that is half-owned by the state? These young people had a dream. Before taking control, they stumbled across an obstacle, an obstacle that should have been overcome. 